family and friends this is Rob the Sapper Gardener along with SK1 representing Essiance Family Garden and today we're going to do a few of the steps that we take to winterize our garden a friend of our Seth at Fallen Sky Prepper asked if we could take a step-by-step -step approach to some of the things we do and we try to keep it as simple as possible uh, so I'm gonna quickly go through some of the basic steps we do and the first thing is to winterize our fig trees um, we've done it a few different ways but the best way that works for us we're going to show you right now so let me turn you around show you a few uh, resources that we're going to use and go ahead and winterize some of our fig trees so we use a few simple things with our fruit trees, primarily our fig trees. Not all fruit trees need to be a winterized. Some need the chill hours like apple trees, pear trees, but trees like figs and others that come from a little bit warmer growth zone than ours do need to be. So for our fig trees, and we're also going to do this with our pineapple guava this year, they are cold tolerant, but that doesn't mean they're going to do their best if you leave them out in freezing conditions. So one thing we want to do to keep water off, we've got some uh, frost blankets or frost covers. You can use different plastics, uh, whatever is cheapest. You can actually even use trash bags or you can use, use grocery bags, anything that you can wrap around your trees to keep water off because if they get wet they absorb that water it freezes it expands it damages the tissues of the trees and then it's going to kill the growth and then your fig trees are going to have to start over from nothing we're also going to use some uh, burlap to wrap around it that'll help regulate the temperature a little bit help to keep it a little bit warmer when the temperature is dropping it'll absorb heat and hopefully keep your trees from getting cold and freezing and again damaging the, the cells and the tissue of the tree. We did a video a few years back where we just used uh, trash cans over our small new fruit trees. We're not doing that now. We're going to make a little teepee system using garden stakes or garden poles and again you can use whatever you have available you can use tree limbs we just happen to have a bunch of these we got from a going out of business sale a few years ago but we're going to TP this we're going to wrap our trees with the burlap we're going to come behind it wrap it with the frost cover or plastic and then we're going to tie that on. You can zip tie it on. We've got string, we're going to tie ours on. And that way you've got that double layer of protection. You've got the burlap to help regulate the temperature and you've got the frost cover to help keep moisture off so that you don't get so much freeze damage on your tree. So let me do a couple of them so you can see me in action. And then we'll do the rest off camera. burlap around the tree and the stakes and we're going to tie it and when we tie it we're just going to pull it in so that all the branches are inside the burlap and the plastic. So one tip that I forgot to mention a lot of times when you get heavy snow you have to worry about it uh, maybe causing the end post to slip through the fabric or the plastic or the burlap. So one thing that we do is we bought a bunch of tennis balls. We cut a hole in it. We push it down on the highest stake and that way it kind of protects it. So one thing I didn't mention, but you can see we have one wrapped here already. 
Down here, buddy. We have one wrapped already. We've got the burlap inside, wrapped around the stakes. We got the frost blanket, or if you're using plastic, covering the burlap. Then we just tie it all as tight as we can. You don't have to worry about the figs are flexible, so you tie it as tight as you can, and that protects one plant. And we started on our second one. Before I tie it, I'm going to take our tennis ball and hopefully got a big enough hole to put it on top, and that'll come closer, baby. Now I focus on this, not me, on this. So we'll take our tennis ball with a hole in it. Whichever stake is the highest, we'll put the tennis ball on that. And you don't really have to worry about the others because when we tie them together, they'll all be like that. So hopefully it won't cause any of the fabric to rip through and slide down when it's covered with snow. So that's one of the steps that we take to winterize our plants. We've still got more that we need to do out here. I'll also show you uh, places that we put them because one of the most important steps is knowing how frost sensitive or frost tolerant your plants are. The most frost sensitive are going to require the warmer environments like a heated greenhouse. Like one example is a Barbados cherry. It's not going to tolerate any frost whatsoever. So you either have to bring it inside your home during the winter, or you have to put it in a heated greenhouse, or it might survive in a garage, uh, even if it's unheated, but it won't tolerate any frost at all. So that's one of the first steps you really need to do with your plants is know how much it'll tolerate. Our figs will tolerate a frost. They'll tolerate uh, freezing conditions down to about uh, 20 degrees, but at 20 degrees, they do take damage. They die back down to the roots and then they grow back from the roots the next year. We're winterizing our trees to prevent that dieback so that next year, when it starts warming up in the spring, it doesn't have to regrow all that that it lost so we'll get fruit sooner and we'll get more productivity from the plants. So we'll talk about a few other things we're doing to winterize our home next. So one of the main things that we do for our winterization is to move our most frost sensitive plants either indoors into our garage or into our heated greenhouse and we have our greenhouse set for 40 degrees so most of the plants that we have we know can survive that um, came out earlier this morning and looked on it it was 21 degrees outside and our greenhouse was right at 38 39 degrees and our plants are doing good in here. We may get some uh, drop leaves. Actually, our cassava plant is probably, along with our Barbados cherry, our most uh, frost sensitive. So we're hoping it does okay in here. We know our Barbados cherry survived last year, so we think it will too. But we've got one cassava plant we actually have three in each pot but we've got one pot in the garage which stays a little warmer than outside and we've got one down in the man cave so we'll see how those do again but it did great last year and we're hoping we get the same results this year so we've got some plants here inside our garage apologize for the lighting and some we know will do great. Some, it'll be a test this year, like our Jamaican sorrel is looking kind of puny right now. But 
our temperature inside the garage has stayed very warm compared to outside. So we're hoping it survives the winter. If not, we've got seeds, we'll have to regrow again. But you can only do so much when you're growing tropicals outside of their grow zone to keep them alive. And hopefully your best is good enough. So, one of the other things we need to do is winterize our faucets. So we're going to drain our faucet, open it up, let any water that's in drain out. After we turn off wherever the main line is for the hose bib. And thankfully our main line is inside. So let me show you that and then we'll drain it. And then we're going to cover it up so that the cold air is limited going up inside the pipe in case there is any water that's tucked in there on a curve that hasn't drained out. So you want to find where your hose bib shutoff is. We're lucky we have a completely finished basement. Your hose bib shut off if you have a crawl space under your house maybe under there if you have a garage it may be in there uh, if you have neither you may have a little plate out in your yard that you have to go in and find that shut that off you want to come in find this turn it off which I've already done here that shuts the water off out to your faucets outside then you go outside Open your faucets up, let any water that's in your pipe drain out, leave the faucet open so that there's air in there that can come and go as it cools up and heats down, but there's no water inside your pipe to freeze, expand, and burst your pipes. So, really easy process once you know how to do it. Once you've turned off your hose bib, inside or under your crawl space or in your uh, water line you want to come out and we have already done ours but just to show you want to open up your water hose let any water open up your water faucet let any water that's in there completely drain off Make sure you don't have a water hose or anything like that attached that might hold water because again, you want any water that's inside your water line to come out, drain out so there's only air. Air is not going to expand and contract. We put a cover on ours anyway. Not everybody will. But this is another way to stop uh, cold air from going up in in case there are any loops or whirls in your pipe that might still be holding water. So that stops the cold air from going in, freezing it, and again bursting your pipes. And you're going to want to do the same thing if you have rain barrels outside. You want to open those, let any water out, flush them if you think there may be clogs holding water. I did that a couple of weeks ago, but I'll put in a quick clip showing when I did that on a different video. So we've got three of these tight rain barrels and these are super easy to winterize. We have a cap down here at the bottom and we've got a spigot here at the top and these can be reversed if depending on how you want yours set up and how high you have it. But when we get ready to winterize ours, we simply take the cap off the bottom. Hopefully you see what I'm doing. And we screw it here. And that way any water that comes in will just come out. Alright, so a little bit of footage of us over the course of the week uh, winterizing our property. 
There are lots of other things you may have to do if you uh, have uh, above ground pipes or exposed pipes, which we don't have, thankfully, at our property. So other things, we uh, do do a winterization treatment for our irrigation system, um, but we get that professionally done. Uh, I, I could probably do it myself, but some things you just don't want a chance going bad. Uh, we make sure that we have uh, firewood for our property in case we have a power outage and so we can do some outdoor cooking and things. And uh, we make sure that we keep our solar battery banks, uh, aka our solar generators, uh, fully charged in case we have a power outage so that we can power things in the home. Uh, some things that we've done before that we're not doing this year just because our freezers are stocked and our uh, canning space is full. Sometimes we'll use uh, hoops and uh, uh, frost blankets to extend our growing season on some of the beds. This year we're just going to let our beds rest. So some beds we'll put in some cover crops, some beds we'll just uh, uh, cover over with silage tarps uh, just to stop any persistent weeds and uh, if we have warm days hopefully the heat will uh, kill anything that's under there but that's wishful thinking we know the weeds will come back but we got our frost sensitive plants indoors we wrapped our trees that needed to be wrapped we got our uh, faucets uh, winterized we got our um, rain barrels winterize so we think we're in good shape we still have some things that we need to do but that's that's always especially on a what I'd like to call a, a semi urban homestead we're at the edge of the city not quite fully uh, in farmland even though you can see the farmland behind me the other side you got subdivisions so Seth, hopefully this helps uh, with what you guys are planning on your new homestead. Uh, we uh, are going to do a little bit of cooking. This is a SK2 day. We like to give each family member days where they kind of plan the meal. And uh, SK2 wanted grilled hot dogs, so he's getting grilled hot dogs even though it's probably 40, 45 degrees out. We're going to give him what he wants. And we're sporting, even though it's cold out, I got my Back to Our Roots hoodie on to keep me warm. If you guys aren't familiar with their channel, head over there, uh, give them a look, and give them a, some support. Um, watch another one of our favorite channels today, the New Orleans Gardener. And uh, I always tell other gardeners, don't be envious of other people's gardens but this time of year when we've got almost nothing growing in ours i'm a little bit jealous of uh, miss linda's garden but that just motivates us to plan for next year so i'm gonna get back on a uh, hot dog duty uh, get ready for the family we're gonna do uh, s'mores again after dinner if we have enough light and uh, enjoy our meal so on behalf of the family here at Essiance Family Garden, this is Rob the Sapper Gardener saying God bless our great nation America. God bless you wherever you reside around the world. God bless our friend Seth at Fallen Sky Prepper, Miss Linda at the New Orleans Gardener, Chris and Cheryl at Back to Our Roots Homestead. Take care. Sapper out. <laughs>